24 amateurs afford to earn a Master Chef apron. The best 12 have now made it through. Now they face each other for the first time. Are we ready for showtime? And they will have to cook for their toughest audience yet. Disaster. Are we really going to be able to serve this dessert? Uh, no, I, I, I can't give it to you. I'm sorry, I can't give it to you. Twelve really talented amateur cooks, and it's about to be their baptism of fire. Comes down from thousands of people, thousands, down to 12. I know I'm one of them. What can you say about that? It's a lot more real now that, you know, you've got an apron on and they don't give those out for free. Now that I've got a taster of getting to a certain level, I just need to go all the way now. Coming in this morning was just incredible, thinking, I'm, I'm going to work today. Today, nervous, very excited, very proud to have this apron on, and um, long may it last. The competition is hotting up. I mean, it's, it's do or die here right now. Fantastic. Welcome. This is the first time we've had you 12 together cooking. And my mate to road, as you can see, is dressed for business. Today, we are going to have a proper restaurant service with John to road calling the pass. I am going to be hosting the dinner. A dinner for some of the best talent MasterChef has ever produced. Seven amateur champions, three professional champions. Your job is to impress them, and they have been in your shoes. OK, time for you to get dressed for business as well. Go and get your chef's whites on. I think we're going to have some really extraordinary food. They've just got to perform. And if they don't, I might lose my rag. Really excited, but really nervous. I'm wondering if they're going to have any mercy on us because they were once in our shoes, but I doubt it. I don't think there's any room for messing around. I'm going to be like serious, like Terminator serious. Well, it's a bit different with John at the past rather than someone you've never met, I'd say. I think he's going to be scary. I think it's really exciting. If this goes well, I should be full up with fantastic food and you should be close to a near-death experience. Thank you very much. You're full and I'm about to have a nervous breakdown. Is it. You will have one hour and 30 minutes to prepare your dish. And then once I call the order, you will have 30 minutes to get the food onto that pass. It's got to be on time and it's got to be impressive. Because at the end of this, two of you will be leaving us. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. The 12 contestants were each asked to design a dish for today's three-course menu. The four starters are being made by Jonathan, 
Jay, Eamon and Aki. Where do you start with Aki? She's studying for a PhD in quantum physics. She can't keep still, she's got so much energy, she bounces around all over the place. But she does beautiful food. Every single cell in my body is dedicated to MasterChef right now. I'm giving it my all. Aki, a pile of beautiful lobsters. Yes. An expensive looking dish. What are you cooking for us? <laughs> I'm doing a Japanese savoury custard with lobster. Called? Chawan mushi. Chawan mushi. Uh, there's going to be some chicken in it, some fresh asparagus, shiitake mushrooms, and it's all going to be concentrated because it's steamed and none of the flavour is going to escape. You're nervous today, Aki, aren't you? I'm a bit, yes. I've never cooked for so many people, so I'm a little bit on edge, yeah, but I'm really excited. I can see the excitement, I can see the apprehension. Yes. It sounds delicious. Thank you. Damon. He is delivering beautiful, big, bold flavours, luxurious food. To be pursuing a dream in your 40s, I think, is a, a, a wonderful thing. I think it's a great little lesson for me to teach my kids. My passion is this, and I wish I'd had this passion when I was 11. Eamon, what's your dish? Oven-baked mackerel uh, with a prosciutto net on the top, served with oyster cream. Oyster cream, explain the oyster cream to me. Literally shucked oysters, white wine vinegar, some cream, uh, whiz them up, serve it cold. You confident? Very, yeah. Are you? Yeah. Good. Amy's mackerel dish, I really like the sound of, but then he's serving it with cold oyster cream. I don't know, I think it's dangerous. I definitely still feel like I've got something to prove because I haven't, still haven't put up a perfect dish yet. The pigeon was good, they really liked that. But there was a, a you know, semi-raw potato on the plate. Jonathan cannot afford silly mistakes like raw potatoes. Not today, not with the sort of guests we've got. You have a woodland feast by the looks of it. Yep. Uh, what are you going to cook for us? Uh, some mushroom ravioli, uh, which will have seps and morels in it, uh, with a sep puree and some uh, chanterelles around the side. And what's that for? Uh, it comes with a couple of slices of roasted chicken breast as well. This is kind of hopefully a match made in heaven. And which part of your dish is not going to be cooked properly? Um, I'm really hoping that it's all going to be cooked properly. Good luck, John. Thanks very much. Jay runs a security company in Southport. He does classic cooking with hardly ever a fault. MasterChef is an experience. You know, you go through everything from self-doubt to like being over the moon and the, the, the next. It's, it's a completely surreal thing. And I never thought you'd go through that, that many emotions in one day. Today you are looking undecidably unsettled. What's happened? I've never I've never took uh, oysters out of the shell. That's because it's a scallop. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> See what I mean? Nervous. What is the dish? It's scallops on a parsnip cream puree with pistachios and prosciutto on top. Are you going to be able to hold your nerve so that you can actually get it on the plate and it does look beautiful? Yep. Be confident, okay? Yep. I'll, I'll be fine. You'll have to be fine. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Appreciate that. The contestants all dream of one day joining the exclusive MasterChef Hall of Fame. This elite group will be dining here today. Since winning last year, Tim Anderson has worked at Michelin-starred restaurants The Fat Duck and Le Gavroche. 
At this point last year, I was still really cocky, uh, so I wasn't feeling the pressure that much. But um, you know, looking back on it, I probably should have felt a bit more nervous than I did. Matt Follis and new mum Thomasina Myers are both still running successful restaurants. It would be terrifying cooking for this crowd, really, really terrifying. We've all been through it though, so I think there is that comradeship that, you know, we're not out to slay them alive or anything, we're willing them to win. Having worked with Rick Stein, James Nathan is now setting up a catering business. Drew Baker is on track to open his own restaurant this year. Very different, very new for a home cook to then be you know, thrust into a virtually professional environment. It's terrifying. Stephen Wallace and Peter Bayliss both continue to work as private chefs and food writers. To deliver great food in the MasterChef kitchen, you have to cook from the heart. It's an enormous challenge for them today. Five minutes gone, guys. 45 minutes gone. Charlie, Afsane, Tom, and Shalina have each created a main course for the menu. Shalina from London has really impressed us with her Mauritian food, and she's worked really hard to make her dishes look restaurant standard. confident with this dish and I think it reflects me as a cook because it's got Mauritius in it all the way through. I want them to just to have a flavour of my island on a plate just to see what it's like. Shalina, you are looking very concentrated and quite focused. I am. Good. I'm pleased. <laughs> that gives me confidence. I'm kind of shocked that I'm here but it's an amazing blessing to be here so I need to just make sure I get through. And your dish today is? It's a Kalia lamb, which is like a Mauritian spiced lamb, uh, bringing the spices into my food again, with a tamarind jus with some broad beans with cumin. Tom, our plasterer from Bradford, has really surprised me, because that fella has got real skill and real creativity. I'd like to say that MasterChef hasn't affected relationships around me, and actually it hasn't, because I don't seem to have any at the moment. I've got a relationship with food, and, you know, that's about it. Uh, Tom, I thought you were making sandwiches for a moment. Good if you wanted. Uh, no, I don't want sandwiches, no, not at this stage of the competition, thanks very much, nor do they. What are you going to cook for us? Uh, I'm doing a pan-roasted duck breast, um, a potato croquette, fused with truffle oil, and a fig and pork sauce. Tom, how's it feel? It's nerve-wracking, obviously, knowing that there's 12 very talented chefs in the next room that um, are going to be trying my food. Well, not all of them will be trying it. Well, those that pick the best thing on the menu will. Mmm. Tom, I like your confidence. It's good. It's good. Being on MasterChef has been really tough. Um, Watching it on TV, it doesn't look that difficult. Um, <laughs> that's probably why I thought I'd have a, have a crack at getting on the programme. Rich vanilla, a little bit of pear, venison and the peppery hot haggis. I'm struggling to like it all together. What are you cooking for us? I'm doing a pan-fried Asian sea bass, oven-roasted asparagus with some deep-fried baby squid. So. A main course dish with three different cooking techniques all having to come together at exactly the same time to go on a plate and get to that pass. It's risky, but I've taken risks so far. Good luck, Charlie. Thanks. Guys, you have just 25 minutes of preparation time left. Afsane is a mother of three grown-up boys and we have really fallen in love with her food. Honestly, delicious. I want to stay in this competition. It's for myself uh, and for my sons. They always told me, Mom, if this is what you want to do, go for it. Afsane, little birds, lots of herbs, 
What are you going to cook for us? I'm going to cook poisson served with herb rice with saffron and lemon jus. How much do you want to go through to the next round? This is my life. Uh, for the rest of my life, I want to be cooking. Yeah, but you can do that at home. No, not the way I do it here, because I like to go in the professional kitchen, because I, ca I cannot simply see myself doing anything else for the rest of my life. This is my life. Good luck. Okay, thank you. <laughs> the MasterChef title isn't just for amateur cooks. Also dining today are three of the outstanding professional MasterChef champions. I can remember cooking in the studio very well. It was one of the most nerve-wracking experiences of my life. I don't think it ever leaves you. To win MasterChef, you've got to be exceptional. You've got to push the boundaries a little bit. Um, but above all, just have that standard where you won't send anything unless you're completely happy with it. Big pressure, really. You don't want to let people down, let yourself down. It's just nothing worse, really, than cooking for other chefs, to be honest. Guys, 25 minutes before the atmosphere in this room changes completely. And we hit service. Finally, the puddings are being cooked by Matthew, Emma, Andrew, and Ashvi. Ashvi is a GP from London and she has proved to me she can do big, bold flavours and she can cook meat to absolute perfection. I absolutely do not like puddings. I've made three puddings in my life. They were for special occasions. I'm not a pudding person. Ashvi. Hello. Your dish that's going to blow their socks off today is? It's a fig tart tatan with a um, salted pine nut praline ice cream. That sounds interesting, quite delicious. What's the risk with that? Well, the risk I've found when I've been cooking it is that the figs release quite a lot of water. So it's been a little bit runny, but I'm hoping to combat it by making just a little bit less caramel and maybe just trying to drain it off. Good luck. Thank you. Emma's food can be controversial. For me, it's all too sweet. Perfectly delightful. And she has had a struggle to keep her place. Last two again. <laughs> I've got to sort that out. <laughs> what are you cooking for us? I'm cooking a um, chocolate cylinder filled with raspberries and a raspberry and beetroot sorbet on chocolate crumbs. So you're tempering your chocolate first? Yes. You got a thermometer? No. Nope. Have you ever tempered chocolate before? No, nope. I just normally just do it in a memory. And what happens if the cylinders don't work? And if the cylinders don't work, um, the, they will work. They'll work. John's scary. <laughs> He's a good scary though. Um, yeah, but hopefully I won't get shouted at him. Huge amounts of processes, fantastic presentation. That man is half human, half food library. Cooking for Master Chef winners is going to be tough because, on the one hand, they will be a little bit sympathetic to what we're going through, but they're also going to be hypercritical because they're kind of they're kind of a club now, and it's like you're cooking to enter their club. Andrew. What are you cooking for us? Uh, poached pears with different spices, the chocolate sauce with cardamom through it, coffee macaroons, praline. So once again, we have lots of different things going on a plate. But hopefully I'll manage to balance everything so that nothing comes through too strongly, but it all goes nicely together. I'm going to ask you from now on that you stop using the word hopefully. OK. OK? If you say, yes, it's difficult, I understand it, that's fine. But hopefully, fingers crossed, cooking just doesn't work. OK. I'm hopefully going to have some dessert today from you, Andrew. You're definitely going to have some dessert for me, and it's going to look beautiful. I 
I don't think I've put a plate in front of them that I have been personally fully happy with. It's time to show them that what they have seen in me is actually there and uh, that's what I was worth putting through. What are you going to cook for us, Matthew? Um, it's a Black Forest Gatto in a cup. Why have you chosen a uh, Black Forest Gatto? It's one of my favourites. I haven't got a really sweet tooth. And I love the sourness, I love cherries. I've tried this sort of bring an old favourite of mine and try and just change it about, put my mark on it, and then hopefully serve it. Three minutes of preparation time left, that is it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, seriously. It takes 20 minutes to cook, I've got 30 I know minutes. how long the ravioli takes to make, but you've got to make 12 of those, fill them up, get yourself ready to go, you've got three minutes of prep time left and that's it. Chef. Completing the guest list are last year's finalists Tom Whitaker, James Perry, Jackie Kearney, Sarah Danison Medio, and Annie Asherton. I would imagine that they're pretty nervous, but hopefully just concentrating on the job at hand at the moment. I remember being out there and just thinking to myself, oh, why have I put myself through this? Having John have a little shout at you, which was a bit, ooh, this is what it's like to be shouted at by a head chef. It was quite exciting, really, wasn't it? <laughs> OK, you guys, the orders are about to come in. You are now on your own. I'm going to the pass. Folks, can I take your orders for starters? I'd like to start with the mackerel fillet, please. Could I have the ravioli, please? I'm going to have the uh, chow on mushi. Can I have the scallops, please? And can I have that without the prosciutto? Savage, first order. One mackerel, two ravioli, one scallop. The scallop, no ham. Second order, one mackerel. Two mushy, one scallop, one ravioli. Yes, 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 yes. And Jonathan is still making ravioli. How many have you got, mate? Two. Two? Yep. Come on! You got water on for them to cook them in? Uh, yeah, chef. You mean no? No, chef. Come on, mate. Come on, come on. Get some water on. And then get that rest of that pasta done. The uh, chow on mushi, the first time I had it, I really did not like it. Um, I didn't like it at all, but it became a, an acquired taste for me. Now I absolutely love it. It can go wrong. It's easy to overcook. It's easy to split. So I think that'll be a good test of skill. And just something that, if it's, if it's good, I, I'll absolutely love it. How long are they going to take? 15 minutes. And you've got 30 minutes before they hit the pass and they're going in now, are they? So what, 15 minutes to cool, 15 minutes to... It's really hot, so it's fine, they need to cool down a bit. Are you your sister today? Sorry? She, where, oh, there you are. Thank you, you're back. <laughs> back in the room, Aki. Nice to see you. How many ravioli now, Jonathan? Uh, still two, Chef. Two? Yes, Chef. I'm very intrigued by the oyster cream. Could go either way, I think. Something that'll either be very good or perhaps not. <laughs> really curious to see scallops, pistachio, and parsnip together on a plate. <laughs> um, hopefully that works. <laughs> uh, your first scallop dish, no ham. Yeah, cut that. Will it work without ham? Personally, I don't think so. But if it's their choice, it's their choice. You've got to give them what they want. Okay. One minute to pass, please. The first table starters.
we ready for showtime? The yes, chef. Okay, let's go. Come on, let's go. On the pass. Come on, quick, quick, quick. Let's go. Good. Thank you very much. Come on, Jonathan. Coming, chef. So is Christmas, son. Let's go. Oh. Oh. Well done, you. Next table, two mushy, one scallop, one ravioli, one mackerel. Chef, Three chef. minutes to pass, please. Very nice. Very nice. Is that ravioli going to be ready, Jonathan? Yes, Chef. Talk to each other, guys. Jonathan, how long? One minute, Chef. Amen. Ready in 10 seconds, Chef. Good. I want you guys to look at each other and bring your plates up together, please. OK. Back again. Next one, please. Quick, I need two. Quick, quick, quick. Head of mackerel toward the customer, please, Chef. Thank you. Wow, that's a portion, isn't it? Crikey. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Well done, guys. Good job. Thank you. This could be an interesting dining experience. <laughs> Is he not scary when he's calling out? You know, yeah. there's unusual. No, your ravioli, Jonathan. Two, two chef. You How many ravioli? Two, two chef. <laughs> Jonathan served up four orders of his mushroom ravioli with set puree, crispy chicken skin, and roast chicken breast. Yeah, and these are people who I've been impressed with when I've watched them. So, yeah, it would it would be good for them to like the food. Really good. I'm really, really impressed with the dish. Um, the pasta is beautifully thin. There's a really rich, earthy flavour from those mushrooms. All in all, that's an excellent dish, and I'd actually happily pay my own money for that. The pasta is quite lovely. The chicken is very nicely made. Well done for whoever's made it. Very nice. It's nicely seasoned. The chicken breast is soft. Sweetness and strength coming from the set and beautiful pasta. That's a good dish. That's a really good dish. Aki served the most starters with six orders of charwan mushi, which is a steamed custard with lobster and chicken, served with duck stuffed shiitake mushrooms. It's a traditional Japanese dish, so it represents everything about me, so I'd love it if they liked my dish. Mm. Mm. Wow. This is exquisite. It's funny. It, it's split a bit. I think that it's gone a little bit overcooked because the egg is separated out from the dashi. But the texture is still really nice. It melts in the mouth. It's silky. It's my kind of food. I really like it. You've got, you've got a load of depth of flavor from all the little different elements. But also then you get bored of that flavor and you've got a lovely crispy mushroom here with duck. Really enjoying it. Eamon cooked five mackerel fillets, served with a fisherman's net of prosciutto, breadcrumbs to represent sand, rocket to look like seaweed, and a cold oyster cream. Raw oysters and cream. Yeah, it's a bit risky, isn't it? You don't go far in MasterChef by doing egg and chips. I really wasn't sure how an oyster cream would fit with an already an oily fish. But actually the combination is really stunning. It's like tasting a mouth of fresh sea. It's really, really wonderful. The oyster cream is absolutely sensational. Really nicely cooked mackerel and the ham around it is really crispy. That's a very clever oyster sauce. Unfortunately, I don't like all three of them together. Jay has served four starters of scallops with pistachio parsnip cream and crispy prosciutto. 
I loved it, really, really did. I didn't want, I wanted some more dishes, to be honest. A couple of surprises, you know, here's a curveball, you know what I mean? For me, the, the presentation is first class. It looks very inviting, looks fresh. I think it shows a lot of respect for the scallops, which are first class. That parsnip cream is absolutely smooth. I would not have thought pistachio would work in there, but it does. A beautifully cooked scallop, and then you get a mild curry flavour, and then you get heat. That's nice. That's lovely. Main course, you've got a hard act to follow, because the starters are looking great. The name. Uh, I'm gonna go for the Kalia lamb. The Poussin, please. Yeah, I'll have the sea bass. I'm going to have the duck breast. Okay, main courses. First table. One lamb, one bass, two duck, one Poussin. Yes, chef. Second table. One duck, two lamb, one Poussin, one bass. Yes, chef. I think there's a lovely combination of flavours, but it'll be really interesting to see if it's as simple on the plate as it reads in the menu, because um, it does look almost dangerously simple. I think that the sea bass dish sounds actually quite hard to cook, because you've got three sort of very time-sensitive elements that could go horribly wrong. Asparagus is very easy to destroy, essentially, if you overcook it. Calamari can be sort of chewy in seconds, and overcooked sea bass isn't pleasant. Ready? Let's go. It's not cooked. Your lamb is not cooked. Nowhere near it. The lamb's been in now for, like, 18 minutes. Good. It's normally... It'll probably take about 20, 25. Big rump of lamb. It takes 12, 12 minutes at home, same size. You can't serve raw lamb. You I cannot serve that. raw lamb. But you need to make a decision now. You can do one or two things. Take the lamb and cut off the ends and, you know, whatever you want to do with it, but... Come on, guys, main courses. Let's see them, please. Selena, you happy? Yes, Chef. Thank you. Really good. Nice chatting. OK. Interesting. Yes. You happy with that? Uh, yes. Yeah? No time to reduce the sauce anymore, so... Yeah? OK. Whoa. Thank you, though. Hey guys, 60 seconds please. Lamb, bass, duck, poussin. Let's go, Charlie. Come on, mate. One up now, and then I need that next fish on, please. Is your next fish on? Uh, not right now, but... Mate, I tell you, right now we are too slow. Too slow. Put the next two fish on, please. They're on. Three fish on, please. I need somewhere else to plate. No, you don't. Just clean your bench down. Move your asparagus out of the way. Come on, come on, come on. I've got so many things. No, you've just got too many things to cook and finish all at the last minute. So next time, think about the dish and service. Not just about yeah. one plate of food, but lots of plates of food. Yes, Chef. It's not me, it's the other guys as well. Their food's starting to suffer because they've been sitting around too long. Come on, Charlie, let's go. Let's go, next table, please. Straight away, is it? I sit and wait on each other whenever you... Oh, 
Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, straight away, straight away. How long for the next place? Uh, two minutes. Two minutes? I think it's in straight away. Two minutes or straight away, Charlie? Two minutes. Two, two minutes, minutes, please, guys. Two minutes. Two minutes. Do you know, just remember that I forgot to take these things off. Oh, no. Disaster. OK, guys, let's go. One minute to pass, please. Shalina, let's go. Yes, Chef. Tom, let's go. Asana, let's go. Charlie, how long again? 30 seconds. I'm going to have to send this table, mate. Pusan, duck, lamb. Table's gone, Charlie. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. You got any more sauce? And that's only five. Imagine if you had a sold 12. I just want to impress with this. I know you're trying to impress, but at the same time... Yeah, I understand. Charlie has cooked five plates of pan-fried Asian sea bass, sesame asparagus, lemon chili calamari, and Chinese cabbage. I definitely give myself too much to do at the last minute, but hopefully they like the food in there. The fish is cooked really nice, the skin's crispy and it's nice and moist. Um, it's lacking a tiny bit of seasoning. I don't quite get what the asparagus brings. It seems to clash with the fish. For me, this just tastes of soy and ginger. It seems almost to me to be a collection of three different things on a plate, and none of them really sing, you know what I mean? There's nothing in there that you eat and you go, wow, I can really, really taste that. Afsane had four orders for her poussin in lemon and saffron jus, served with dill and broad bean rice, a herb frittata, and Greek yogurt. See, this is the problem. I don't know where to start. <laughs> I want them to love my food because I cook from my heart and I hope they see it on my plate. Mm. I think there's a lot of potential in this dish. I think the depth of flavour is there. The cooking techniques are there. I think it's just a, a case of refinement and that comes with experience. I mean, the rice by itself is superb and the herb flavouring is very good. Love yoghurt, sour yoghurt, tinny saffron on the rice with dill. Love it, love it, love it. I'm amazed John's let this come out with string on it, because John goes crazy with a bit of string on the meat. Tom served six orders of pan-roasted duck breast with a white truffle croquette, carrots and a port and fig sauce. I went in, you know, to service confident with my dish, but uh, little elements weren't quite right. So I've just got to try not to beat myself up about the little mistakes I made and hope that, as a whole, it was good enough. I think with a dish that's so simple, they really need to get every element to it spot on. I don't really feel they've done that. You want a sauce that's nice and sticky. I think if you've got fig and port in it, it should be nice and shiny, glossy, and, and coat the meat. In terms of the balance of ingredients, the ducks cook really well. The potatoes are really beautiful, with a hint of white truffle oil. But the carrots are a real afterthought. I mean, these are really disappointing and personally irritating. Where's the sauce? Where's, where's he? Is there somebody out there with a jug of sauce under their bench? Criminal. Shalina has served four orders of Kalia lamb on pumpkin puree, surrounded by broad beans and a tamarind jus, topped with plantain crisps. I've never undercooked lamb in my life. I hope this doesn't hinder my chances because the, the meat was cooked in the end. It was just um, obviously in the kitchen, there was a bit of mayhem. The lamb dish, I really like the flavours. It's, it's um, I think, presentation's quite naive. It's a huge slab of meat straight down the middle of the plate. I love this type of food. It's really lovely spiced, lots of kind of flavour in there. The lamb is good, but it's also kind of uneven. There are parts that are quite rare and there are parts that are well done. It's all a little bit sloppy. Texture's a little bit wet.
Can I take your orders for puddings, ladies and gents? I'm going to go for the raspberry filled chocolate cylinder with beetroot sorbet. I love the fake tartatan. The praline and chocolate pear. I'll have the Black Forest Gatto, please. For me, I'm probably the only one here who's old enough to remember it first time round. OK, dessert, orders, check on. First table, one tartatan, one Black Forest, one choc pear, one cylinder. Second table, one pear, one tartatan, one cylinder, one Black Forest Gatto. Yes, Chef. The desserts today have to be stunning. They've got to be elegant, sophisticated, interesting, exciting, all those things, and still make everyone smile. Tough gig. Beetroot sorbet. It sounds lovely, doesn't it? It's the cylinder I'm more interested in. <laughs> I want to see how they hold the cylinder. <laughs> The person I'm most worried about cooking Poire de la is Stephen Wallace because I've just found out that he won the final in 2007 with that dish. It'd be great to see how the, the chocolate, the coffee and the blackberry work together. It'd be really amazing. Sounds very intriguing. He will be the toughest critic, I'm sure. How much time we got? Matthew? Yep. You know you've only got 15 minutes for that first dessert to go out, don't you? Just one. It doesn't matter, just one, mate. They should be ready to go. 15 minutes. After that, 16 minutes. Then 17 minutes. You only started to compile them. Matthew, Black Forest Gatto in a glass. Really interesting idea. But with all those variables, anything can go wrong. And by the looks of Matthew and the way he's panicking right now, it's starting to go wrong already. It's quite a technical dish tart to You can ruin it really, really easily. And there's always that thing with that where you can't see underneath it. So you kind of you kind of got to judge it without actually knowing what it looks like. a bit soggy, I'm thinking about turning it back and putting it back in the oven for a bit. All it's going to do is cook the figs more. But would it not make the pastry that's now been sitting underneath all that juicy caramel? Probably not, because once the sog gets into the pastry, that's it. Two minutes on the first table, guys. Two minutes. Matthew? Are we really going to be able to serve this dessert? No, I, I, I can't give it to you. I'm sorry, I can't give it to you. The mousse hasn't set properly. The glass is too watery. Can you not at least get a plate and make a slice of cake and some chocolate mousse or do something? Something? No, there's nothing that I will... I'm sorry. I really am so sorry. You've got to serve something for dessert. Yeah, we have to say okay, something. Fine. So do me a favour, clear this stuff away, and let's just grab a plate and try and do something, OK? I, I am so sorry to let you down. I just... Don't let me down, you let yourself down, mate. I oh, know I have. I don't deserve this a bit of this. What's the nicest part of a Black Forest Gatto? The cherries. Good. Cherries at the bottom of the glass, please. And then maybe a layer of this between your cherries and your cake. Yeah. OK? Maybe you just want to crumble your cake in there. Do whatever you like to yeah. do. But the fact is you've got to serve it yourself. something, okay? yeah. yeah. OK, guys, I need the first table on the pass in 60 seconds, please. Good. Right, Matthew. Yeah? Have we saved it? Hold on. Um, 
What's happened, Emma? Uh, the, the, um, they, bro they broke. So you've got one, have you? Um, no, but it broke. What are we going to do? I've got these ones. Ah! I'm going to have to serve this table at some stage. Right, I've got one. OK, next table, please. You got three there, Matthew? Yes, Chef. You'll have cream whipped? I'm cream. OK, guys, let's go. I'm going to make this decision. Let's go, please. Rest the yeah. tables up. Service is over. Many thanks indeed. Yay. <sighs> Last year was tough. This year was a lot, not tougher. There's been some ups, some downs, and there's been a couple of merry-go-rounds. Matthew has managed to deliver five portions of Black Forest Gatto. With a bit of help with John, we managed to get a pudding out but just didn't go at all, didn't work. It, it's served in a glass and it's not a wedge as I remember from the 70s, but all the flavour is there and that little touch of booze, it's really good. I wish it was a little bit richer with the chocolate and um, the sort of fruity, cherry, boozy bit at the bottom is a little bit watery, but other than that, it's great. Fairly simple, but if you get it right, then it's a winner, and I'm happy at the end of that meal now. Emma has served five chocolate cylinders filled with raspberry and rose water with beetroot and raspberry sorbet and chocolate crumbs. It was a real nightmare, actually. I remember thinking halfway through, oh my goodness, I can't do this. The cylinders aren't going to work, and I was like, and I just had to go, no, just keep going, just keep going. I love the fact that they're brave enough to put to pair beetroot and raspberry in a sorbet because you can actually taste the beetroot. And it's almost like a nice bridge between the chocolate and the berries. The sharpness and the sweetness of that raspberry coming out of that chocolate tube is absolutely quite incredible. Very good palate, really quite impressed. For me, this is definitely the nicest thing that I've eaten today. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Ashvi had five orders for her fig tart tatin with salted pine nut praline ice cream. I messed up a little bit with the timing, so possibly didn't let the pastry cook for as long as it could have. But other than that, I'm actually really happy. The pastry is a little tiny bit thin, but it's a very, very minor quibble because I think the flavours are balanced properly and I think all of it, for the most part, is executed really, really, really well. This pie nut praline ice cream is absolutely delicious. The only sadness is I'm a total pastry nut. I can eat pastry on its own. And this one was a tiny bit soggy. Andrew had four orders for his praline and chocolate pear with coffee and blackberry macaroons. Those little macaroons there, they're like cute as buttons. You could have them as buttons, but I'm going to eat them. If I could do it again, I might do the presentation slightly differently. John said there were some nice colours on it, but I thought it looked a bit 80s. But I think it all tasted nice, so... Mmm. Oh, my God. The macaroons. It's so sharp as well. It's beautiful. I think the pear's been cooked extremely well. Uh, I like the surprise of when you cut into it. The chocolate spilled out. I thought that was wonderful. And I think that's uh, a very technically gifted chef that's prepared this.
it was good fun in here. There were some absolutely knockout dishes, uh, the few dishes I absolutely fell in love with. By the looks of your face, it was probably harder work in the kitchen. It was really, really hard work. But I've got to say, I'm proud of all of them for continuing to just push and push and push. I think they did all right. But there were some star dishes. I tell you a beautiful dish, that ravioli. I think my choice of the starters. What are you grinning at? What happened? Our friend Jonathan almost sent me in a flat spin, but he persisted and he delivered one of the best dishes in that room today. Andrew's poached pear with chocolate and macaroons. You know me and my weakness for a juicy pear, and then to find chocolate oozing out of it as well. Fantastic. Everybody, without doubt, loved the chocolate with the raspberry and the beetroot. The filling with the raspberry puree and the rose water I thought was delicious. It was a good dessert. Jay's scallops were cooked beautifully. A bit of curry in there as well, a little bit of heat and uh, slivers of bacon. I thought that was lovely. You know, to stay would be like euphoria, you know what I mean? It'd be, it'd, it'd be awesome, you know? You know, you'd have to shoot me with like a rhino sedated or something to calm me down, you know what I mean? <laughs> Eamon made the mackerel with the oyster cream. I expect that just to go one of two ways either to be loved or not. Well, it went both of those ways. <laughs> Everybody enjoyed the flavour of the chawa mushi. And then those mushrooms with the duck, gorgeous. Afsana today, the poussin was cooked beautifully. She braised it first with all the saffron, but she left the string on. John, you hate string. You go mad over string. I... Everyone came out with string on it. I hate... I'm sorry. So, at the moment, there are five people at risk. Ashvi, Charlie, Shalina, Tom, and then Matthew. Ashvi with her fig tartatan. She made that ice cream, which was lovely and creamy, but the pastry underneath just went to sog. Had I just put it in a, a little bit later, it, yeah, it would have been really good. Charlie with his Asian sea bass. A few people thought that it wasn't bold enough in its flavour. And he held everybody else up. Everybody. If I'm going to win MasterChef, I need to seriously think whether I can survive what I'm planning to do, because if I did any more than I did today, I probably would have passed out. Shalina, her spice lamb, it, it just didn't quite come together for her. People had irregularly cooked lamb. Just, just a sloppy dish. I think I'll be absolutely mortified if I left today. I don't actually want to think about it at this stage. Tom? The duck, right, really annoyed me and annoyed a lot of people, because I love the flavour of it, but what happened to the sauce? No one had any sauce. It's, it's critical that I go through it there, just so that I can hopefully develop the way I want to. Today, there was only one person I had to step in and help, and that was Matthew, because he fell apart completely. So without you helping him, Matthew wouldn't have got it out? No. Just nothing worked today. I messed up on the oven and the ganache, the mousse didn't see it. I hope they let me stay in there, because I am so much better than that. Look, who, who do we throw a lifeline to? Who do we think we actually has, has got what it takes and who really is not cut out for this at all? Yes, that's the question. Well done, U12. Well done. That was a very difficult test. Each and every one of you proved that you had the right to be here. Some fantastic dishes. But for us, there were people today who simply stood out. They are... Jonathan. Andrew. And Jay. A 
Simon. Contestants leaving us. Are Charlie and Matthew. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I got and I just it's been an amazing experience the whole thing so thank you basically for MasterChef for improving my cooking and giving me the chance I'm glad I applied well, this nerd didn't work we should, we should have done what I could do I couldn't do nothing different and it's cost me the competition I just feel really overwhelmed. I really thought I was going home. It's just making me realise how tough this uh, competition's getting. It's, it was a real challenge today. Very nerve-wracking to be standing there in the final five, but happy to be through, nevertheless. I'm so relieved to have got through, but it's just made me so determined not to be in that situation again. I mean, my heart won't take it. I will say to all ten of you, if you think today was tough, just wait to what comes up next. Next time, the pressure is on as the 10 remaining contestants face their first mass catering challenge. Oh, you're gonna have to. Ah. Ow! Watch out, watch out. I smell burning. I'm all crying out loud. These guests wanted literary drama, not real drama. 